Neil from Messick's here today to address some internet controversy today, maybe. I don't know if I call it controversy necessarily, but here a couple, uh, say two years ago, uh, another YouTube channel, Tractor Time with Tim. Tim and I are good friends. We communicate regularly. Tim did a series of videos comparing the Kubota BX to the John Deere 1 series. Tim absolutely did his best to go through and do his very finest work to try to compare those two tractors. And while I would nitpick some about what he did, um, <laughs> He did his best. Tractor comparisons are hard to do. I've made my own errors in the past doing them, but Tim was drug into a conversation with another gentleman who was comparing some of Tim's results against his own tractor. The comparison that we're gonna look at here today would be Tim's turning circle, where he took his Kubota BX tractor, did a turning radius comparison to see how much uncut circle of grass was left in the middle. Now, Tim came up with a result in two-wheel drive of 78 inches and in four-wheel drive, 104 inches. Another gentleman named Brian, who owned a Kubota BX, looked at those numbers and said, you know what, when I do a circle in my yard, my numbers look nothing like that. They're quite a bit tighter. Now we're not gonna go through and pick through different people's methodology here today, but we are gonna talk about the turning radius of your tractor, the adjustments that can be done that cause the difference that we're seeing here, and maybe inform you a little bit to some of the value that comes out by owning a service manual when it comes to making adjustments on your tractor. Six. A helping hand with your land. Now the difference in these two tests is probably due to a difference in the adjustment on the steering stop. If you look at the back side of your tire, you're gonna notice there's a bolt back here with a jam nut on it. That can be adjusted in or out to change the steering stop. Once you've turned that wheel the whole way around, that bolt is going to contact the axle and stop that tire from turning further. Now the adjustment on that bolt is actually pretty important because if it's adjusted too far in and you're letting your tire turn too far, there's a number of different you know, things that could be damaged by that, be it steering linkage or in the case of a bigger tractor with a larger tire, the tractor can actually come around and contact the side of the hood. Um, you could do damage to your steering cylinders. When you're at that extreme angle, you want that steering stop to be hitting the axles, the back of the axle housing to keep damage from being done. So this adjustment is important. It is not a case where you should go out with a wrench and turn these nuts in further to be able to get a better steering angle. There's a reason for these adjustments. Now, in order to get this information and know how to make these adjustments, I'm referring to a service manual. Now, service manuals don't come along with tractors. It's unfortunate that they don't because there's a lot of good information in here that often is not contained in your owner's manual. These are available digitally. They're a, a you have to pay for them. They're not inexpensive. I believe this one is around $100 or so. We at Messick stock the paper version of these. Most people don't want these on a PDF and would prefer a book and a binder to be able to put them on. We sell enough of these here at Messick that we actually stock them, which is important to know. Usually when you go to order a paper manual like this, they have a really long lead time because they're printed in batches, but we keep them here in order to have them available for a quick sale. If you're working on your tractor, you probably want this thing right away and don't want to wait weeks for it to come. So we've got them here on the shelf for you. Now, when I go through and I refer to this section in here, the adjusting the front steering wheel angle, I'm going to notice that on the right side, I should have 0.91 inches of adjusting bolt sticking out from the axle. And on the left hand side, 0.063. Those numbers are different. It's due to a difference in the geometry of the hydraulic steering cylinder. So before we do our test here, we're going to check that my tractor is properly adjusted from the factory so that we get a true uncut radius when we do our test here with our tractor. So interestingly enough here, if I am expecting a measurement of 0 0.063 here on my left hand side, now this tractor is from the factory. It has not been through our shop yet to be PDI'd. Uh, this is coming out at 0.82, more or less. So I need to take this in about two tenths of an inch. So I'm gonna loosen the jam nut here, turn the bolt in a little bit, and make that adjustment so that I am turning, in this case, tighter than the what it is set right now from the factory. Do you ever read half the directions and make a mistake? Because I do all the time. <laughs> As I'm working my way down through here, we're starting at 
right? Steps one and two that tell us to inflate the tires, loosen the lock nut, shorten the length to the dimensions that are here in the service manual, but then to steer the wheels to the left and the right and make sure that the nuts are contacting the axle, which is what we really want, right? These are stops and they're there to stop it for a reason. After I made those adjustments and made that turn, I noticed that I was not contacting the axle. So we're taking a second pass back here around, bringing those bolts out further and making sure they're hitting the axle again, because the important thing here when we're making these adjustments is knowing that that stop is going to stop the wheel at its intended spot. With those bolts turned in too far, the wheel does stop without them contacting. So that's not a good thing. So we're adjusting them back out further now, further than the dimension here that was in my service manual that I was shooting for initially. So we're going to repeat the test here the other guys did. Now remember we had Tim at 78 inches, Brian at right about 60. So we're taking our tractor here in two wheel drive, putting it to full lock, doing our donut to see our uncut circle of grass. Now we're going to add one more thing here. So this is going left. And I'm also going to go over here and do this going right. And these are going to be two uncut circles, both in two-wheel drive. You hear my engine fighting. I'm basically cutting right down against the ground so I can get as defined a result here as possible. So we're scalping here as we go. So those are two-wheel drive. So now we're going to go put the tractor in the four wheel and repeat exactly the same thing. Now in four wheel drive, the front wheel assist is going to push the tractor out of the turn. So we're going to have a larger, bigger turning circle here doing this in four wheel drive. You'd expect that, right? You ever drive a four wheel drive truck or something before? You know the big impact that you, that four-wheel drive has. You can feel it fighting every time you're making a turn in a parking lot. Now this will be the result for our four-wheel drive, both left and right. The results of this are just fascinating stuff here to be. Okay, so if we take our smaller circle of grass here, we pull out our tape measure and measure end to end. Remember Brian was at the 60, 62 inch mark. I am right there as well. I'm about 60 across one measurement and 62 across that measurement, kind of agreeing with what he came up with, right? Our, our measurements are matching there almost exactly. Where this got even more interesting though is you remember I did this test clockwise, but I also did counterclockwise. I was curious about this because reading through the service manual, some of these stop adjustments actually kind of indicate that the tractor might turn sharper in one direction than it did in the other, which is why I did both directions. So I was coming over here and measuring this circle of grass and what did I get? 82 inches just like Tim did. So my first reaction to that was, did Brian drive one direction and Tim drive the other direction? And is that why we got results like this? Because these measurements kind of matched spot on. And no, we went back and reviewed Tim's video. And in fact, both of them were driving in the same direction. So in fact, Tim's steering stops must be adjusted wrong. So come on, Kubota, what is this? Like I drive a tractor one direction, I get one result. I drive it the other direction, I get a completely different result. Like how does this make sense? But actually it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. If you look at the left-hand side of the tractor where I get that smaller result, the trimming side of your mower deck has the blades, the mower deck actually shifted to the left-hand side of the tractor just a little bit. The center line of where that blade is set is almost out at the outside edge of the tire. That gives you that extra reach beyond the tractor on this side. On your other side though, you look at where the center line is for the blade over here, it's well inside the tire. So there is a shift in this mower deck 
favoring this side of the tractor. So your trimming side where you're reaching up against your landscaping or your trees is able to reach out a little bit further, giving you that smaller result. So if you're trying to do say donuts at the end of your headland turns as you're going back and forth, you're probably better to make those turns to the left than you are to the right. So we've actually learned something here today. So now for those of you that are armchair statisticians, uh, I've got four wheel drive numbers here for you before. So Tim came up at 104, I'm coming up at 83. And if I do it in the other direction, discharging into the middle, which you probably don't wanna do because you'll do what I did here and leave gigantic clumps of grass in the middle, I'm at 106. So again, if we go back and we say whose results were right, Tim's or Brian's and mine, it looks to me like Tim's steering stops were probably not adjusted correctly. Now, let's be clear. I know Tim well enough not to question his credibility. This was probably a misadjustment on his tractor and nothing more. But a lot of people at this point may have been misinformed about the turning radius on a small tractor like this. And it is in fact quite a lot tighter then you may have been led to believe by another channel. So here to help, I think this was fascinating. I had a great time doing this. Um, the fact that the, the blades don't center under the tractors, I think is fascinating. Some of the steering adjustment stuff I think is really cool. There's great value to buying a parts manual also here for parts needs for your tractor. If you need any filters, fluids, any other things that have broken on your machine, the guys here at Messix are all here to help. Available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com. You know what, I think these results are different.